Alan Titchmarsh Show from the heart of London. Corey Silabattersby on Life After the Street. Why funny man John Culshaw has a serious voice. And they're teeny, they're cute, they're here. Micro Pets. Please welcome your host, Alan Titchmarsh. Welcome to Tuesday's AT Show. What a fabulous lineup we've got for you today, including this little girl. Let me introduce you to Lola, the miniature Yorkie. Isn't she pretty? Look at that. She'll be back later in the show with lots of her micro pet friends. So I'll just hand her over there now. There you are, Shall I? I'll see you later, Lola. Don't be late. We've got a date. <laughs> She's sweet. But before all of that, it's been announced that after 15 years, one of Corrie's best-loved characters, Hayley Cropper, will be leaving the soap. Hayley was the first ever transsexual character to appear in a British soap, but has her time on the street changed our attitudes towards gender swapping? Joining me now, the two people who know exactly what it's like to live as a transsexual in modern Britain, here with psychologist Angela Mutanda, are Sarah Savage and Luke Anderson. <laughs> Now, Sarah, you started life as a boy, and so where are you now in terms of a woman? Uh, I'm on my way to transitioning um, yeah. into a woman. Um, I'm, I, I've just started on uh, hormones, which will kind of change the, the, my body shape and it will change my hair. Um, so kind of right at the beginning, really. But did you always feel you were the wrong gender in the wrong body? or the right gender in the wrong body, whichever way around it is. You always felt you were a woman in spite of the fact you had a man's body. Yeah, I, I always felt that I didn't quite fit in, in my own body. It, it never really dawned on me until I was kind of in, in, in my early teens, actually, what, what it was. Mm. But um, uh, quite early on, I, I remember I hated having my hair cut. I used to go and hide under my bed and cry every time the hairdresser used to come. I can think of a few really heterosexual men who did that, actually, <laughs> sometimes when we were kids. Luke. Yes. Now, you, it's the reverse way around with you. Tell, yes. us, tell us your story. Yeah, I mean, similar sort of thing, really. I used to hate going shopping as a child. Um, I hated any gifts of uh, clothes for Christmas or whatever. Like, I did not want any skirts or anything like that. I was a tomboy. And, uh, you know, all my life I felt male in mind, so I felt my body should match, how I think. So when did you... Transition. You know, change. Um, I started when I was 28, so it was quite late. Yeah. Um, because I felt a bit sort of pressurised by society to try and fit in. Um, so I put it off for 10 years, which, you know, I kind of regret, but it's all good. It's, oh, wait, has, do you think, Angela, things like Hayley Copper in Coronation Street, has it changed our attitude to transsexuals? Are we more understanding now? Or has it caricatured the condition? I think it's brilliant having a character like Haley on something like Coronation Street because what it does is when you don't know about other people, yeah. they become other and we're a bit afraid and we make up our own stories about what they're really like. When you get a fantastic character like Haley, you get to see a real person who has real feelings and goes through similar things that we may be feeling and going through. Mm -hmm. And that kind of builds a, an emotional connection and you start to see them as another person to connect with. And I I think that's so important and that's the role that soap operas do play in society that's really positive. But Julie, who plays Hayley, isn't a transsexual. It is a woman. Does that upset you? The, the uh, no. role isn't played by In 1998, when she first joined, it was so exciting and a breath of fresh air. But now, we're in 2013, I believe we really need a trans person playing a trans character. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not upset about it. I think she's done a fantastic job. What's the hardest part about it? I mean, it's, it's difficult still for people to accept, isn't it? I mean, what was the hardest part for you? Um, for me, it was kind of gaining acceptance from my family, which yeah. I'm still working on at the moment. Tough. Um, it's tough for, for, for any family, I think. Yeah, really, definitely. Yeah. I, I can totally see how it would be very hard to, to understand for, for a family. Yeah. Especially, I mean, because I'm from Jersey. It's a tiny little world. And trans people that just don't exist over there. They're, they're so quiet. Nobody's ever heard of a trans person in Jersey before. Is it an uncomfortable transition physically, Luke? I mean, in terms of what you have to, you know, how your body has to change. Um, and you both change, obviously, in different ways. Yeah. A man becoming a woman, a woman becoming a man. The, the only sort of thing that I found uncomfortable was the injections that the uh, 
female to males have to have. It's an intramuscular injection that we have, like, at mine's every three months. And I found that quite painful. But apart from that, the surgery, you know, it's not too bad. It's, yeah. it's fine. You're at a later stage than yes. Sarah's. That nobody, I guess, now would know, unless you haven't been in a Big Brother house and come come, come out there yeah. about it. Nobody now would assume you would ever be in a woman. You're yeah. much, you know, you're more masculine than feminine. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm at I'm peace with my past, so I don't mind telling people about it and helping people learn about, you know, where I've come from and where other people have come from. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I consider myself 100%, you know, my transition is complete, so I'm happy. So you've still got, obviously, somewhere to go. And I gather vocal tones can be raised as well, so you'll sound more feminine. Crikey, yeah. I mean, I, it's it's a, a long kind of um, process to learn how to raise your voice and then to, to learn how to do that every time you, you open your mouth to speak. It's, it takes a while to get round, and I'll, I'll get there sooner or later. <laughs> we, you'll still have this, this Guardian here from a, a few weeks ago uh, about April Ashley, who was the first um, sort of documented transsexual. There will always be prejudice. Andrew, do you think that is the case? Are we getting better at it? I think we're getting better at it because the more we have fantastic people coming mm. on and talking, the more it goes from being a taboo and secret and something to push away. But presumably and it's taboo and open. secret because people don't understand how, for instance, you two could have relationships with people of the opposite yeah. sex. I mean, is it complicated? Not really. Not if the other person's open-minded. Yeah. Um, I don't see what the problem is. If two people love each other, it doesn't yeah. matter, you know, what parts they've got. It's all about the person and the personality. Do you feel the same? So, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I, I, the person that I will fall in love with will, will see me for who I am yeah. and, and we'll, we'll work out our problems. Would either of you have done anything any different? Would you offer advice to anybody who hasn't yet begun the transition that you two have? What advice would you offer to them in terms of going towards it? Clearly, you would say, take courage and do it, presumably. But what would you say don't do? I'd say, you know, make sure it's a process that you've really thought about. I mean, a lot of people that go for it, they know what they want. But yeah. there's, there's still a slight percentage of people that might still be a bit sort of dubious about it. Um, for me, it was all about finding other people who were trans and being able to relate to them and finding about their, their motivations for transitioning. F figuring out who I was not was just as important as figuring out who I, who I was and, and who I want to be. That's very interesting. It, it's beautifully said. Yes, <laughs> and, and also this this fact that it's very isolated. It can be very lonely. So it's yeah. important, really, that that others who are not you know transsexual are more understanding about more it. More understanding, and also that there is a community of support because it's incredibly isolating, and that can do a lot of negative damage to a person when they think it's just me going through through what I'm going through. And this is how I'm the only one feeling like this. But as soon as you have support and understanding, you know, when the things like this first come out, we all go, oh, it's horrifying. And then it starts a debate, doesn't it? And we start talking about it and start getting to understand people, and building our knowledge. People just want to put it away if they don't yeah. understand it's a little bit scared yeah. of it, don't they? Which must be incredibly hurtful Yeah. yeah. in your case. Thank you both very much indeed for coming on and talking Thanks freely and openly us. about it and perhaps laying a few ghosts to rest. So thank you very much indeed. My thanks to Sarah, to Luke and to Angela. Thank you very much.